Here's another, another article. AARP estimated that 1.7 million people who retired during the pandemic, okay, they were retired, are reversing their retirement. Welcome, Mike, the Golden State Picker. Not in my garage. Look where I am. Can you guess? I am in North Carolina in my home on the East Coast. I have a house in California, and I recently bought a house in North Carolina, one door down from my uh, daughter, son-in-law, and my three grandkids. Okay, so they come running over in the morning. It's really cool to see that. It's it's just amazing. So uh, I'm lucky that I can do that. My wife really is is happy that that's happening. And I'm in this room. This is what they call a frog room. What's a frog room? Front room over garage. Now I'm from California, so I don't know, didn't know all that stuff. It's that typical, like you see it pitched, you know? And in here is gonna be my East Coast kind of setup. When I'm back here, I wanna do stuff for eBay and Amazon FBA. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know, I'm gonna make this place cool. I'm looking around today, I was looking at some stuff. It's probably going to have a rock and roll theme. It might, who knows? But I was putting in insulation, um, and uh, they've done electrical and AC while I was here. And the next time I come out, they're going to finish the drywall. We'll show you a video as we go along on it, help you out, uh, give you an idea. Maybe I'll even ask for ideas. What do you think my room should be? What theme? You've watched my channel, you kind of know. I'm sure it'll have some books, I'm sure it'll have some music. Give me an idea. I, I, I'm open. All right. So, um, basically I want you to stick around too. I got the end of the video. I got something inspirational for you. Uh, something about bamboo. That's all I'm going to say. Something about bamboo, but we're going to talk about the main subject of this video, the title. And it's basically is selling is reselling a way to a better retirement or even helping you uh, along your journey of life, okay? It's so expensive now to just, seems like to live. I mean, I was I was born in the 60s and my main part of my life was the 80s, which were great, the 90s were great. And it seemed like things were more in perspective. Things now are just absolutely crazy. Everybody's trying to make ends meet. Everybody's struggling. You got all kinds of stuff going on. And it's tough. And I want to help you understand that maybe reselling is a way for you to bridge the gap, those extra dollars you might need, especially if you're, you got family and you got two, three kids, all that kind of stuff. It's hard. Yeah, it's not easy. I had them, I had kids too. And now I'm in the age of trying to retire. And I'm, and I, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but, you know, retirement is a whole different thing, all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about it. But basically, we're going to talk a little bit about this and then that one little subject at the end and a little bit about my thinking about what I'm doing in my retirement. So trying to maybe you can you can think a little bit about like it like I am, that kind of thing. So anyhow, here's here's the headline for you. It says three in five Americans, 61 percent say that price increases have caused financial hardship for their household. We all know that the last two years have been nuts. And this inflation thing is crazy. 10% one year, I think it was more close to 15. 3% this year, I think it might even be higher than that. But let's just call it 15% in the last two years just to round it off. So that means everything's going up. We all know that. Eggs, milk, uh, PG&E. Uh, PG&E means gas and electric for me. Uh, car gas, you name it, it's all going through the roof. And it seems like you're you're swimming upstream and you just can't get to the to the wall. You know, it's just struggle after struggle. And it's no different for anybody. Even I feel it because I know that it's taking away from me. You can feel that it's taking away from you. And that's what is, is going on, right? So from this article, there are four areas that people are concerned about. I'll give you them. High cost of living inflation is 35% of the people. Are, that's the number one issue. Cost of owning, renting a home, that's 11%. Too much debt, 9%. And lack of money, low wages, 7%. So they're all about money, right? Every one of those top four have to do with money. And the number one thing is inflation, right? 
And that's crazy, right? So what unites them all? The shared need for extra money to cover your everyday cost, disproportionately impacting certain groups, like individuals with lower incomes or retirees. Yeah, those are the people who are being being hurt the most. The uber rich, they're always going to be uber rich. Nothing we can do about that. I hate to tell you, they've been around since the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, you name it. Uh, they are always going to have that money. And there's, you know, we can complain and do everything about it and say as much as we want. But it, it's never going to, it's not going to change. It's it's game over there. I hate to say that. All right. So it's frustrating to constantly worry about your job and what lies ahead in the future, the stresses, the strain, all of that plays into it. But we can somehow gap some of that if we can do reselling. And, you know, you can go get a second job. Who wants to do that? Who really wants to go out? I mean, I know I know it's out there and I know it happens. Don't I'm not belittling that, but who wants to? The person who's doing that really doesn't want to do it. But there are people who come from one job, come home for four hours and go to a second job. So all I'm saying is instead of that one job, go to reselling. It's more in your home, that kind of thing, a little bit more fun. OK, it's like shopping. That's what it is. It's so much fun shopping. So it, it, it creates a different attitude, I think, in you when you have this personal side of it, like a, it, it's a business. And so it's in your home, that kind of thing. So I feel that that's a great way for many of us to bridge all these gaps that we're having. Uh, if, if you need a few extra bucks at the end of the month to, you know, bring it closer, right? In retirement, you know, oh, I just need a few more dollars. You know, that kind of thing. That's what I'm talking about here. Basically, it comes down to this. You know, here's another another article. AARP estimated that 1.7 million people who retired during the pandemic, okay, they were retired, are reversing their retirement. Many are padding their retirement accounts, trying to, to avert all of this inflation. It's hitting them. So they can't make it. So they're having to come back out and do something to bring in a little bit extra income, right? What is fixed income? Fixed income is if you're a senior and you're sitting at home and all your sources are, um, let's say, a little bit of a pension, maybe, if you're lucky, and Social Security. Those two things only go up with the cost of living, the COLA, right? You've heard about that. Last year, many seniors got a 10% raise because inflation was running so hot. The government doesn't like that. They don't want to give out 10%. You know, they just don't, okay? They want to keep it under control. But the fact is they have set a new floor. They will talk a lot of bunk to you. And that what, that's what drives me crazy is the news media right now is saying, hey, inflation is coming down. No, it's not. No, don't, don't give us that. I'm not dumb. For the last two years, it's been running about 13 to 15%. Has it dropped 13 to 15%? No. It's now normalizing. So basically, they've created a whole new floor. Here's the floor. Now this floor is now only moving up about 3%. Where the floor was down here, it jumped 10%. So this floor is now built. The, that's it. It's, it's game over there. That's what they're doing. And it'll tick, tick. And then all of a sudden, you have a spike five, 10 years down the road. So they're constantly eating away at you, right? period. End of story. There is no, there is no, basically this is what inflation is. Currently inflation stands as the most significant tax burden we encounter. It's a regressive tax, okay, that disproportionately impacts the middle class and those with lower incomes, particularly those on fixed incomes. The rich, they don't like inflation, but they don't care. They got so much money, it doesn't matter. So the middle class and then this lower class, you know, and the fixed incomes and all that kind of stuff, we take the brunt of it. We take the massive brunt of it because we don't have what they have. OK, we have to earn more in order to basically beat inflation. So many people are facing a growing challenge and making ends meet as it significantly eats away at the monthly budget. I can tell you about my daughter and my son-in-law. My son-in-law is in the Coast Guard. Fixed income almost, basically, you know. It, I, got, I can go off on a lot of things. I'm telling you, it just drives me nuts. This country, 
Uh, when it comes to our military, I don't think they give enough to them, period. Uh, being in this area of North Carolina, I'm in Jacksonville area, Camp Lejeune. I see so many young Marines. Oh, it's inspiring when you see these, these young Marines. So polite and so nice. And, you know, it, it's just really is inspiring. My, my grandfather gave 35 years to the Navy. And uh, I was in the era where there was nothing going on. It was like after Vietnam, all that kind of stuff. But um, my son-in-law, Adam, is uh, in the Coast Guard. He's trying to get a retirement and all that kind of stuff. But he has to supplement his income. And how does he do it? Through reselling. He saw me doing reselling. And he's got three kids, two dogs, and his daughter. And he just purchased his home uh, three years ago, about three years ago. And he has to make it work. He's a hustler. I've been here and he's and he sold five or six things on Facebook Marketplace while I was here reselling. I even helped load up a mattress and a box spring because he wasn't here at the time. He said, hey, can you get this out for me? I was more than happy. I love it. I love what he's doing. OK, he's learning from me and he's getting some inspiration. I actually push him. We push each other. We show each other. And I know it's going to be a big part of his life for the rest of his life. So I think reselling can really make the difference. It makes a difference. If they didn't have reselling, I really don't know um, what they would what they would do, basically, right? So let's put it this way. You got to invest in yourself to be the best at what you do, period, okay? Uh, that is number one. You have to invest in yourself. I'll give you a second one, but I'm not going to talk about it. You heard me talk about it all the time, though, if you watch my channel. The people you hang around with are who you are going to become. End of story. You have to surround yourself with the best. Find the best people to hang around with and stick with them. They will, you will rise, right? The cream rises to the crop, to the top. You hear all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind, okay? But basically, just work on yourself, right? Investing in your own talent is one of the best ways to maintain your purchasing power over time yourself, reselling, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to talk about Warren Buffett. Everybody knows who Warren Buffett is, but in 2004, he had this, he, he has his um, uh, Berkshire Hathaway meetings and he gets up there. And, and at that time, somebody was asking him about inflation. And he said, he said a few things. And this is what he said. He said, the best surgeon or lawyer in a city or town benefits from an education paid for in old dollars, but is able to price their service in current dollars without having a, to re-educate themselves. Beautiful thing, right? Be the best, and you can charge the best. Have the best eBay store with quality items, and you're always going to get the money you're asking for. Instead of having to constantly say, I need the money, I'm going to take this offer, when the item should sell for 100 but you're selling it for 70 because you didn't want to wait a week or two. That kind of stuff. You want to get to a point where that's how you run your business, right? So um, you really don't have to go to school to be a reseller, right? That's not that's not what this is talking about. Use your knowledge you have accumulated over time. I'm 62 years old, so I have a vast knowledge of stuff. Uh, I've grown in the last five years about more stuff, and that's how you're going to do it. So if you're 30, you have 10 years of experience, let's say 20 to 30 years old, of your era. You have probably more knowledge than I do of your era, okay? And as you grow and you watch channels, that's what I advise people to do is watch all kinds of resellers because they all find stuff and they all have some good content. So keep that in mind, right? But basically, the overall thing that Warren's talking about is you have to earn your way through it inflation. That's the only way you're going to get through it. You have to have earning power. And that's why reselling is a potential to help you earn more. You've got your job. If you're at your nine to five and you got to have that nine to five, more power to you for a while. But if you can build this reselling, when you get older, this will become more and this hopefully will become less. So your reselling will grow. And over here, you're going to say one day to the boss, Bye. See ya. I'm done. That's what you want to do, right? So it's it's a big thing, but it takes some time, right? So keep that in mind. So uh, 
it's just frustr it's also frustrating to constantly worry about your job, right? And what lies ahead in the future. You must reach a point where your life is not controlled by extreme external influences. What do I mean by external influences? Number one, the United States government. Okay. I don't want them to have any say in what I do with my retirement, et cetera, et cetera. That's it. Got to pay my taxes. Fine. I get it. I understand. But I want to be a distance away from them. I don't want them to be behold me to be beholden to them where I'm having to get money from them to survive. And it just they seem to have that control on you. I'm not one of those weird uh, you know, preppers, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying. I'm a common sense guy. That's me, period. I have, a, I just, I see it and I call it like I see it basically is what I'm saying. Right. So we need to figure that out. We need to get away from things that control us. What are things that control us? Banks, car loans, student loans, all of that kind of stuff. Now you can have a mortgage. Nothing wrong with that. You got to have a. You got to live. If you only had the mortgage, take that. Take that mortgage, and ask yourself: No car loans, no credit card debt, no student loan. Are you going to make it? I'll bet you you will. Now it's difficult because you might be in debt. Now there's Dave Ramsey. There's all these guys out there that can you know help you there. But I can tell you. That it might look bleak now, but if you attack it now and you work on it and you get to that point and you sacrifice now, you will be amazed it will happen later on. So please keep that in mind. That's what I'm talking about. We want to be in control. We don't want others to be in control of us, right? And I can't remember what the name is, The Richest Man in Babylon. That's a great book to read. Um, and, uh, that's an interesting book. So if I ever find one of those, I'm going to give that book away. All right. So keep that in mind. All right. The other thing about reselling for, if you're, if you're new and you're thinking, how do I start? Basically you start with what you have in your house. Okay. That's how you start. You can start with zero. I started with zero. Rally Roots talks about how they took 200. Take a look at them. They've grown huge, right? Uh, Reezy Resales, another guy that started pretty much with not much. He talks about his his upbringing, how he got to where he went to. Watch him a little bit. Some people might think Reezy's, Reezy's crazy. I love Reezy. Reezy's in my area. Reezy's great. Um, but it, it gives you a chance, right? So start with what's in your home. Now, you might want to have a garage sale. That's interesting, right? Start with a garage sale. Get Keep the good stuff, maybe. But the other stuff, try to get some money. Maybe you make two, $300 on a garage sale. If you do, take that money. Go out and resell. Go out and find something to buy. Go out and find something to flip on Facebook. Go out to find something to uh, put up on eBay that's quality. That's a key, quality. And then I want you to reinvest the money. I want you to learn to put it back in the system, basically. And then put it back in the system again. And put it back in the system and grow this system of money. If you're constantly taking out because you need it, there, okay, some of you are going to need a few dollars. I get it. But you need to find a way to constantly reinvest it. It might take you six months to get a really good traction. Okay. And it also might take you six months to get through the eBay system where eBay isn't holding all your money. Sometimes they hold your money for a while. I can't remember how long it is. But I think that's a good thing. Let me explain that. When you first start out, eBay is going to say, hey, uh, we're going to hold your money. We, we've got to be careful here. We don't know if you're going to scam and split the scene. So they hold back and they only pay you X days, okay, after. Think of that as like a savings account. And if you don't need that money, don't touch it. Let it stay in your account. Use that money to buy some stuff and then grow it again. And one day eBay is going to say, you're going to call up eBay because that's what you got to do. Call them up and you say, hey, I need to up my increase for buying in categories, all that kind of stuff. That's that's basically when you're new to eBay. And that's going to go away. And eventually that's, the number is going to be huge like me. It's like, I'll never hit that number. So I just keep selling, you know, period. Just keep selling over and over. So keep that in mind. You must sustain this cycle over and over and over. You'll get to a point where 
You're not going to think, do I have enough money to buy that? Nope, I'm going to buy that thing. I'm going to buy that and I'm going to sell that. I don't have to look. I just know. Here you go. I'm buying X item. $50. Don't have to look for it. Okay? That is key. So you must maintain that financial discipline, sustaining the cycle in, uh, until you solely operate with profits free from concerns about your purchases. Key. You want to be able to buy when you op when the opportunity arises. So that's something you need to keep in mind, right? Uh, you know, you must you must discover how to reach a stage where the challenges discussed in these articles no longer impact your family in a negative way. You want to get to where the government, inflation, and all that we know it is in our lives, okay? But we want to get to a point where it's not constantly causing um, tension, stress, where it's just like, okay, I got to deal with it. It sucks, but I've got enough income. I'm making money. I understand how it works and you'll be amazed. You, if you can get to that point, uh, it's just, hey, it frees you up. It does. It frees you so that you can just think about reselling, think about the business instead of all that stuff, all the family obligations, all that kind of thing, right? So keep that in mind. So that kind of is my tie in there. Now I'm going to give you a little bit about me, right? So I'm now 62, started when I was 57, had no idea what I was doing uh, for the first two years. And now I kind of know what I'm doing. And I said, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Here I am, 62 years old doing this, trying to help people, trying to encourage. And basically what I'm trying to do is you hear me talk about vision, not goals. I have a vision. The great book to read is Atomic Habits. You see me give it away on this store. I'm not going to give it away this time. But please, if you ever get that book, you ever run across that book, Atomic Habits. It Last year was the number one selling book on Amazon in that category. Atomic Habits. James Clear. So anyhow, um, basically, I'm trying to fill those gaps in of 62 to 66 and a half, 67. Five year window, basically. I've got a vision, not a goal. The vision is continuous. The goal you hit and you kind of stop. You want to lose 20 pounds, you lose 20 pounds. Boom, I'm done. I got my 20 pounds. Next thing you know, you put 30 on. You want to change your habit. Your habit is eating. How you eat, that will continually sustain you. Same thing in uh, everything else. Vision. So my vision is, this is what I want to do for now, but I'm still going to continue growing after that. I'm not going to just stop, okay? That is big time key. You know, that's basically it, right? The traditional way of everybody talking to you about finances is save, do this, do that. Great thing. You got to do some of that. But the reality is most of us can't do that. And how do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Reselling. We got to do a part-time job or something, but reselling is a great way to start that. Because it's a low cost to entry. There is not a lot here. You do not need, I'm going to probably get bombed on this one. You don't need all these courses, guys. You don't. Okay. I hate to tell you, you don't. It's all right here. It's all on YouTube. I didn't take any courses. I'm not knocking it. Okay. There are a lot of great, great courses out there. There are, but you don't need one. It's all on YouTube. It's all on up here. It's all on your basic knowledge. That's all it is. Uh, you can find out anything on YouTube. So keep that in mind, okay? We'll talk about some of that some other time. Uh, so keep that uh, keep that in mind. The truth is we are all unique with varying means at our disposal. While some have ample resources, right? Others may not. Com consequently, certain individuals will require more financial support than others as they approach retirement. Okay, health, all that kind of, yeah, I understand that. that there's, there's some of these things that you can't get around, okay? But you can still try or you can still figure some things out. Again, some of us have the means, some of us don't. But basically, uh, you got to figure it out because if the, when you get up to the retirement age, you just don't want to rely on other people and the government especially, okay? I don't trust those guys as far as I can throw them, okay? I think a lot of you know what I'm talking about. So keep that in mind. Just remember, what would that extra $1,000 a month? I think everybody can do $1,000 a month. Yes, I do. That's $12,000 a year. Here's my thinking. 
You've heard me talk about this over and over. If you break it down and you say, if I can do $100 a day, gross sales, it doesn't matter whatever it is, that's $36,500 a year. If I can do $200 a day, $73,000 a year. Doesn't sound like a lot. It takes a little effort. But if you're consistently good at it, it will happen. That's how I thought when I first started out. I said, let's figure this out. Let's do 50. And I said, let's do 100. What can 200 do? What can 300 do? What could 400 do? What could 500 do? Last year, I averaged I had a little over $500 a day on eBay. Okay, I think it's 150000 I think that's where it comes out to, something like that. You can watch all my videos uh, about uh, what I made, that kind of thing. But that's the way I think, okay? I don't need to push it any further. I just kind of let it grow you know, organically. Great word, huh? Organically, I got it in. Uh, anyhow, so keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to tell you that are, there are some things that you can't get around. One of them is healthcare. So if you're going to be a reseller and you're going to jump into this game, uh, reselling is um, great, but you got some things. And one of the biggest things is healthcare. I'm going to tell you what mine is. Mine is $890 a month for healthcare. Why? My wife is lucky. She retired from the state of California at an early age of 57. And uh, she's been retired now almost two years. August will be two years. And uh, uh, I jumped on her policy. So I get a little bit of a discount. I have a really good policy. I pay really nothing, okay? So I have to still pay that $890 a month. That's like nine, 10, 11, almost $12,000 a year, right? Just in healthcare. Tell me down below if you are paying, what you're paying, if you're my age or younger or what's going on in healthcare. That's the other thing that drives me crazy is uh, the healthcare. I, guys, I could go off. I could really, really just let some stuff out, but I'm not going to in this video. Someday I probably will. So anyhow, that's a big nut to crack. So keep that in mind. Uh, that's just, that's a tough one, right? Also, once I get to this age, I'm not quite to social security. My wife isn't either, but what's got timing's kind of interesting. She'll be 62. I'll be 65. Uh, and then we're going to be able to, we'll probably pull hers at 62 and mine later because of the taxes. There's all kinds of implications, but anyhow, I don't want to touch any of my investments. I don't want to sell my home in California. I just bought this home in September. Uh, so these are good assets to hold on to. So that's another thing I'm trying to keep my reselling so that I can make sure I keep these assets together. So that someday if I want to sell my California home and move here permanently, I can. That's kind of what I'm getting at. And I think that's how you have to think about it. Never touch your investments if you don't have to. Okay. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Okay. So that's it. Also remember, the younger you retire, the more your budget stays the same for a while. It takes a while to learn how to pare it back, if you get what I'm talking about. I know that when I get 65 and 70, I'm going to have to make a few adjustments. I'm hoping not too many because I'm going to keep reselling until I'm in a wheelchair. Okay, I'm going to keep on doing it. So keep that in mind. Also, if you retire, you got 40 hours to fill in. You can sit around and watch Judge Judy all day. Uh, you maybe got 20 hours of Judge Judy. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean that. But you know what I'm talking about. You got to fill in 40 hours. So what better way than maybe uh, spending a few hours a week uh, doing uh, reselling? There you go. Good idea, right? So I think reselling is great. I think it's a great way to supplement gaps for inflation, gaps for retirement, all of that kind of stuff. Hope you watch the channel now. Because I give you some good things I sell. I sell some pretty hot, good things. So uh, basically, now for the inspirational part of the video. We're going to talk bamboo. What What do you mean bamboo, Mike? Well, I like to listen to certain uh, in, in um, inspirational speakers. And Les Brown is one of them. And Les Brown had a story. He's talking about bamboo and the journey of growing bamboo. Okay, did you know that uh, it can take five years to basically uh, have a, a bamboo grow, grove kind of fully become bamboo, right? I didn't know that. But it also is takes three years for some individual bamboo shoots to grow. Three years, okay? That's a long time. But here's the kicker. All those three years, the action is down below the soil, 
you don't see anything. You got to still water that plant, fertilize that plant. I mean, that grass is a grass, but you have to do all of that on the bamboo. And you get nothing for three years. Zippo. You don't see nothing. You look down. Nothing. What's going on? It's bamboo. And bamboo takes three years for it to finally sprout. But when it sprouts, okay, within, what is it? I, I, got, I got the notes here. I was, in 40 to 60 days, that bamboo, once it breaks through the surface and does its thing, in 40 to 60 days, it will reach its adult size. Now, some of the bamboo can grow at four feet a day. Think about that. Four feet a day. That's crazy, right? In one single day. And basically, what we're getting at here is you've got to build your business and you've got to have a foundation. And sometimes you're just not going to see anything for three years. It's going to be tough. Maybe a year. I'm exaggerating here, right? And it may take some people that long. But you can't give up. Because you're never going to know if you don't. You will for surely never know if you quit. Okay, um, at times yeah, we get desperate or we, we dis, despite our unwavering commitment to our vision. I'm OK. Progress remains elusive. We navigate days with few sales, workplace hurdles, home life responsibilities and weeks that seem to lack a clear path forward. Right. That happens to all of us. OK, but the people who strive are going to have a chance to know if it if it pays off, right? But there are tragically many who abandon ship just before they sprout upwards like the bamboo. You just don't know. For three years, you know, you go, oh, throw it away, I'm done, I can't do it. But you don't know what's around that next corner. So you have to keep striving, you have to keep going, and you can't give up, right? I leave you with this, the cartoon that I love to put up occasionally. And uh, many of you have seen this cartoon, but I'm going to show you it to here. It's going to be up here in a second. The two guys digging for diamonds. The guy, one guy stops and he's turned around and he's given up. And the other guy breaks through. They were both this far away. So making it. One guy kept going. The other guy turned around. You don't want to be the guy that turned around. Because you're just never going to know. And that's the thing. It's difficult at times. But if you just build the foundation, just like the bamboo uh, grove, uh, pretty soon, if you know what you're doing and you're trusting yourself and you're staying true to yourself, all that is going to sprout up and you're going to make it because I know you're going to make it. I'm proof. I am proof that you can make something of your life and you can make it uh, make it happen with reselling. So I hope you get a little bit of that from me. Uh let me know about this room, what you think. You know, what do you think I should do? What should the theme be? I think it's going to be rock and roll. I don't know. We'll see. I know there'll be books. I'm pretty sure. Maybe some magic, too. Mm. Who knows? Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. The one thing I ask is hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell notification, just so you can get more of my videos. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video.